Good afternoon, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Aurevillians. Today, I'm very grateful, I feel privileged to, int to introduce you to a dear friend, Vladimir, for whom I have the greatest respect because he is one of the pillars of the ongoing Matrimandia work. Namaste. Namaste. As I always do, the first question I ask people is, how did you hear of Sri Arbindo and Mother? Where were you living at the time? It was probably beginning of 1990s, 1990 year. Mm -hmm. It was time when in Russia everything suddenly got free, just everything. And naturally all kind of knowledge which was not available before suddenly just popped up. Like all kind of healing courses and occult courses and astrological courses and Ooh. this kind of things. Ah. You know my friend Dmitry van Morenschild yeah. was at Dartmouth College, and he formed, founded the Russian Review, which was all the samizdat that came during the communist period. So, was this time when Gorbachev was there? It was little later. I think like, it was 1990. When ah. I, uh, you see, I was kind of uh, felt interest in all these things, and I got a few courses of healing of astrology oh. or some energy critical oh. things and so on and I was kind of kind of I didn't know what is actually uh, what is my way mm -hmm. how old were you then? I was uh, 32 32 32, 35 mm -hmm. and uh, what were you doing in Russia? I was working as a manager in a big company. Mm -hmm. But you were searching? No, I was searching, yeah, it's always somehow I felt that always inside me, like, you know, like some, still in the communistic times, there were some old ladies which uh, could heal people and so on. So I was always kind of feel something about it. And when it is, was total mixture in my head, of all these courses and lectures and invitations and uh, I went to one lecture which was about healing by jumping to the ice water <laughs> and there was bookshop and there was uh, adventure of consciousness probably in Russian? in Russian, first, in Russian. probably it was the first print I just took it and after a few days, I realized this is it. This is what I want. And then, in '94, it's already some books of Sri Aurobindo appeared in translation. I wrote to Ashram. I had a question. I don't remember which question I had, yeah. but there was in some book the address of Ashram. I wrote to Ashram a letter that I would like to understand something. And I've got an answer that, uh, listen, you just come and see how things are going and, you know. Ooh. And I understood it as a call. So I said, okay. It was bottom of the crisis. I had no job this time. Mm -hmm. Family was about to collapse. Family was? About to collapse. Oh. And I said, okay, I'm going. So I closed down everything. I took some books with me and I came here. And uh, the first, the second person whom I met was Dmitry von Morenschild. Oh. And he took care of me. You went? He took care of me because I came oh, to really? Ashram. I haven't, I didn't I know about our really anything. So I came straight away to Ashram. <sighs> and uh, people luckily brought me to Dmitry. And Dmitry took care of me. See that. And I in, never knew this. Yes, I was quite... Uh, many years I was with Dmitry. 
And Did you in, live in Golkon for a while? Yeah, he was living. I didn't live in Golkon. Ah. I was living in Cottage Guest House. Ah. And uh, then, uh, then I was working twice a day with Dmitri. And he told me about all kind of what's going on in Ashram and what is Ashram and Kama Ashram lives. And in a month I realized that I cannot stay in Ashram, but I met already some Russians from Auravil. You? Met some Russians from Auravil. Oh, I see. Dmitry introduced me. There were already five yeah. or six. Yeah, there were some, yes, in, yeah. the, in those days. Yes. Yeah, there were five or six of them, and uh, I met. Uh, I realized that I cannot stay in Ashram, but I can stay now. So I purchased a kerosene stove, uh -huh. a foldable bed, and with kerosene stove and foldable bed, I came to Auravil. Where did you stay? I stayed in community <coughs> which called Udayan. Mm. And I stayed in a not finished house without doors and windows. And then I was staying in all kinds of places for 12 years. Oh, I see. And only after 12 years I got my place. When did you begin work at the Matrimandir? The same day I came to Matrimandir, next day I began to work. I see. Because I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> it was not Matrimandir yet, it was unit which is called now Aquadin. That time it was called Utsa. Hmm. And then after a few years I joined Matrimandir. What is your work at Matrimandir? I'm in charge of electrical department. Can you tell us a little bit about that work? Uh, is there any emphasis on solar energy or... Tell us about electrical department. Uh, what to say? You see, Matrimandir is a... What you know what is Matrimandir. And... Uh, it's, uh, there are particularities, like chamber IC is supposed to be silent, mm -hmm. like lights are supposed to be soft, like whatever we are doing is supposed to be highly reliable, yeah. like uh, there are unique things like a heliostat. Yeah. And I'm taking care of these things, many, many things I have designed and built myself. Oh. Did you design the original heliostat? Original not, but uh, now it is third generation of the heliostat, and recently I designed control system for the third generation of heliostat. How has it improved over the first? Uh, it's not really improved, mm. I would say. Because the first one was very simple. Designed by Piero. Actually, I came to work to Matri Mandir. I was called to repair Heliostat. Oh. And I have repaired Heliostat, and then I got an invitation to work in Matri Mandir. Now, did you do electrical work in Russia? You had some background? Yes, I have. I'm an electronics engineer. Oh, okay, okay. So, tell me about this Heliostat. The first one was simple. The first one was very simple based on first model of computer, oh. which is called 386 computer. Designed from A to Z by Piero, mm. which is a great man to me, who designed Matrimandir from the bottle tank to, yeah. yes. to the Helios. Yes. And, uh, and of course, after that, I picked up all the things about electricity, air conditioning, ventilation, and telecommunications. Mm. But that was my first job. Then it was time when it was Windows, this and that, Microsoft, powerful computers. And we had Heliostat, which were running on Microsoft, on Windows, on advanced uh, software. But the performance was always the same. Hmm. The performance was the same. Then we came, recently we came, that uh, I came to understand that I need backup, everything getting old. So I built very simple backup, which is based on 
PLC programmable logical controller, which is very simple and it does the same performance. Huh. Actually, we are doing another generator of generation <laughs> generation of uh, heliostat controls with uh, Aravili unit. I hope within a few months it will be fourth generator generation. I say fourth generation. Wow. Yeah. And what about solar energy? Any lighting on the pathways? Or? Solar energy, it, uh, we have to say thanks to Toan for that. Solar, solar, solar plant appeared in 1997. Mm. And this is project of Toan. And that time, 1997, it was the biggest solar plant in South India. I see. And since 1997, we are maintaining this project, and it is in a good condition. We are updating it, upgrading it. Has the um, efficiency of solar panels uh, increased, improved? Let's say generally, yes. It was changed already twice. Oh. Generally, yes. Um, I'd like to know if you can tell us some things about your experience, Sri Aurobindo and Mother. You say you began with the adventure of consciousness, which many of us began with in the West, of course. It was the book. What did it do to you? I find something which is good to believe to. Yeah, yeah. Something you can believe. Yeah. And stay with this. And stay with it, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you have family here now? No. No. And uh, how do you see the response of people in Oroville to the Matrimandir. When I was there recently, I saw many people going in the early morning very quietly, but I don't know anything more. You see, years and years I can observe more or less the same people who is coming to Matrimandir. More or less the same. Mm -hmm. The rest are come in when they have to bring friend or something or show something. Generally, everyone respects. Generally, everyone helps when we ask for help. You see, it is um, my perception of Madri Mandir after 22 years working there is different. Because when I was just a Ravilin and I was coming to meditate to Matri Mandir, I was coming into the chamber and... You know, and now I'm coming into the chamber and I'm listening. North fan is okay, south fan is okay, airflow, yeah, airflow is okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, beam, yeah, okay, a little bit I have to improve, yeah, 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 I have to do this and that, you know. <laughs> understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it unfortunately, it's not anymore what it was in the beginning, you know. It is still there. No, hopefully it is still there, but... No, it is know, still there. You know, like, you know, like, I'm a citizen and there is a church, or church, or priest. And there is red inside the church, I'm a red inside the church. <laughs> I know everything about church, about priests, and, you know. May I ask how you see the progress of Oroville? I don't see much. And what about the Prime Minister's visit? Will it help? It's, it probably might help in a certain social level, in this, to have to serve some social problems. But I don't see any spiritual help. 
I don't think there could be some. Uh, generally, I see by this year that uh, our revealings are not the same. Our revealings 20 years back, 20 years back, were more interesting of interesting of this, interesting of that, interesting of to go on. And now I would say uh, everyone can meet each other without having mobile phones, without having internet. Everyone was no know what going on. Everyone was coming for the meetings, for whatever problem it is. But now I can see that it is hardly by using all kinds of informational system uh, people can get involved into voting or in discussion of anything, you know. I see more and more, uh, more and more attempt somehow to survive. Ah. To survive just life. That's what I can see. And survive means you basic things? Basic. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Are there groups who are meeting and reading Mother and Sri Aurobindo, studying the works? I don't know any. I see. I see. You say you don't see much progress. I don't see much progress. On the level that we are most concerned with, which is the transformation of ourselves. No, I can't. I don't see <laughs> much. Going forward, uh, do you have contact with other areas of Oroville, such as Greenbelt, or...? I'm very much involved into nature camp. Oh. Group. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about that? We I have nature camp. Nature camp? Nature camp in Kadai Canal area, where the hotter season we are taking children ah. for camping. Oh. And I'm very much involved in this work. I'm going every year a few times there to, for some reason, for construction work or for, to deal with the children. I haven't been to Kota Canal in many years. Has the road improved? <laughs> yes, the road is improved. <laughs> good, that is good. for sure. But the amount of people also increased like yeah. five times. You know. Yes, yes. What, what, do you, what do the children do there? Well, it is a camp. Yeah. It is a camp. Yeah. It is a strict, uh, let's say, schedule. Like seven o'clock, everybody go doing push-ups. Oh. And then after breakfast, everybody going for trek. And after lunch, everybody doing something. And everybody goes to sleep nine o'clock at the evening. Oh, I see. Very structured. Yeah, this is yeah. very structured. Otherwise, you cannot... It's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. How many children do you take at a time? We are taking three groups of 50. 50 each? 50 groups each include teachers. Normally, so normally, yeah, now a little bit less, let's say 40. But at least at least 100 children every year we are taking there. And what age? From 9 to 16. Oh. Um, all Oravillians or village children also? Sometimes, sometimes. Some school which is under Oraville. Ah, okay. Of course, village children as well. Wonderful, wonderful. I see that you like that work very much. Because that's what I'm doing all my life. I'm doing all my life trekking and hiking. Is my second, is my second, is my pleasure. Ah, okay. Okay. And once a year I'm going to Himalaya track every year. Oh. You can take the heat better than I can, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, who do you work with most closely in Oroville and Matrimandir? Normally it is John for many, many years. Who? John? John. Mm -hmm. Others as well. And actually, you see, uh, I have the same workers all these years. 
I remember them young. Uh-huh. I remember their marriages. I remember how they did, the kid appeared in their families. And uh, let's say such a Ravillians who is all the time there like Dorothy. They like? Like Dorothy is there all the time. Oh, yes, yes. Like Pierre. Pierre, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So there is a core group at Matrimandia, you would say? Speak freely. I would not touch this topic. You would not? I would not touch this topic. I would not touch it. I see. Matrimadir is a special place and there are always groups which are uh, which are very jealous to be the one. And time to time, one group changes another group. Is this like the coordinators group, especially the coordinator groups, other groups also? Other groups? No, it is, let's say, it is always in matrimonial group, which is ruling matrimonial, let's say. Yeah. In some years it was one group, then one group was replaced by another group, and another group was replaced by third yeah. group. Well, I remember the days of Michael, Divya, Andy, yeah, it was good and time. Gilles. Yeah. I remember them very, very warmly. We worked together very harmoniously, all of us. What about the gardens? You see, when there was Matrimadir coordination group, MMCG, mm-hmm. They came to conflict about gardens, and they had to leave. When there was Divya, Michael, and Andy, in a few years they came to a situation with the gardens, and they had to leave. I'm, I'm aware of this. Yeah. And now it is uh, the same moment when somebody trying to touch the gardens, and somebody had to leave. Well, I pray always for change. I will be 80 this year, so I don't have the physical energy anymore. But I'm always there to help. And to help in any way I can. So, I have faith that the gardens will be done the way Mother wants. One day. One day. It may take some time. Ah. What else can you tell me about Dmitri? Because I'm very interested. About? Dmitri Van Morgen. Dmitri. Because very few people have spoken about him. I mean, I, he, I know his story because he has you told know, me. You know what is aristocrat? Yes. He was aristocrat. He was definitely aristocrat. He was aristocrat. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is, this is what I can... This is tells about everything. He was aristocrat. Way to talk way to deal with, way to behave. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To, the, to the very end. To the very end. To the very end. Yes. He helped me greatly in the gardens too. Mm-hmm. Every month or so there would be something from him. Very generous. Very generous. Yeah. Oh, so this has been very interesting. Um, for yourself, are you reading? Do you read now, Mother and Sri Aurobindo? When it is too bad. When it is too bad. Too bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we must read also, yes. But um, do you see yourself continuing? in the same work at Matrimandia for the near future? I would say like that, if. I'm expecting changes. Changes uh, definitely supposed to happen. They might suit me, might not. They 
positive changes? Change is always positive in a certain way. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, you see, it's uh, it's always when change happen happening in matrimony, then let's say one of group, group of people replacing another, or you know. So I see. I'm not. Uh, I love matrimony, but I'm not attached to matrimony. And I'll see what what will happen. Mm-hmm. Good. Can you say something to the world about Oroville? Your feeling of Oroville, your reason for being in Oroville? You see, it's, uh, to me, basic thing is belief. You need, man needs to believe in something. If I am now Ravil, then Aurovil is something to believe in. Because honestly, I don't see anything else to believe in. Oh. In the world? In the world. Yes, yes, yes. What is there? What yes. is there? Collective harmony. Do you see a possibility for it? Mm. Now or in future, near future? You mean within our Ravel? Mm. Not now, I would say. Not now. Not now. You are a very dedicated man, and I always have appreciated your approach to work. And Mother makes such importance uh, about our work and how it should be something dedicated, devoted, sincere. I thank you, sir. You're welcome.